Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still talking about gas laws, and so today we are going to talk about Boyle's Law. So, um, Robert Boyle uh, was an experimenter, um, experimental physicist really, not a chemist, um, and he was looking at the relationships between the pressure and volume of gases. So he set up something called a J-tube, and added mercury to it, and he looked at what happened when you changed the volume of the trapped gas. So he looked at the relationship between the pressure and the volume of a trapped gas, and he found that as the pressure on a gas increases, its volume decreases. So here is a J-tube, and this uh, dark stuff here is your mercury, which is a liquid, and he has um, trapped air here, and he found that if he increased the pressure, the volume on the gas decreased, and the, um, if you decrease the pressure, the volume increased. So he played around with what happens as you increase and decrease the pressure. So um, we could look at this um, another way. If we had a piston and we had a sample of a gas, and this is a sealed container with a lid that we could um, exert pressure on, if you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. So from here to here, as you increase the pressure, the volume decreases. And what you can notice is gas particles, remember we said the particles are very small, relative to whatever space they occupy. So there's quite a lot of distance between them, and as you increase the pressure on them, they compress and they're much closer together. So an increase in pressure results in a decrease in volume. So that's an inverse relationship. So he did many experiments, and again here we're showing you, I'm showing you data for various pressures and what happens to the volume. And when you plot it, you see that there is an inverse relationship. So as the volume decreases, the pressure increases, and vice versa. So again, this relationship is an inverse proportionality. When one increases, the other decreases. So typically when you have an inverse relationship like that, when you multiply them together, they equal a constant. So pressure times volume is equal to some constant where P is pressure, V is volume, and K is a constant at constant temperature. P1 times V1 equals a constant, and P2 times V2, again, is equal to a constant. And here we're talking about for a fixed sample of a gas. You're not adding in any new particles. So we can rewrite that as P1 V1 equals P2, V2, where the 1s would be the initial conditions and the 2s would be the new or the final conditions. So when we solve problems for these, we just have to make sure that we keep track of what the initial conditions are and what the final conditions are, and then we can solve for what's missing. So for now, this is Miss Augustine signing off.